Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting blog. And in this video, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 6.5 Swede, 260 Remington, and 6.5 Creedmoor cartridges. Now, most hunters and shooters in North America will probably agree that 6.5 millimeter cartridges in general are much more popular now than they were just a decade or so ago. Regardless of what you may think about the cartridge personally, the 6.5 Creedmoor in particular has greatly benefited from this change in attitude towards the 6.5 caliber. Now, while the 6.5 Creedmoor is a great cartridge that is popular for good reason, it's far from the only well-designed 6.5 millimeter cartridge. It's also been surrounded by a lot of marketing hype from fans of the cartridge, and it also receives a lot of shade from those who don't like it for various reasons. There are valid points on both sides of the debate, but there are also a number of genuine misconceptions regarding the 6.5 Creedmoor since it first came on the scene. For these reasons, the rapid ascent of the 6.5 Creedmoor has prompted questions about how it really stacks up against some of the more time-tested 6.5 millimeter cartridges like the 260 Remington and the 6.5 by 55 Swedish in particular. What's so special about the 6.5 Creedmoor? Why has the Creedmoor really taken off while the 260 Remington and 6.5 Swede have struggled to gain widespread acceptance in the North American hunting community? In this episode, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 260 Remington, 6.5 Creedmoor, and 6.5 by 55 Swede in an effort to cut through some of the misunderstandings that swirl around these three cartridges so you can make an informed decision regarding which one will work best for you. As usual, we will begin with the history of these three cartridges. So the story of these cartridges begins in the 1890s with what we now call the 6.5 by 55 Swede. Fearful of being outgunned in a future conflict, European and American military forces scrambled to develop service rifles designed for use with smokeless powder in the late 1800s in the middle of the transition from black to smokeless powder. Now, the result was a series of new cartridges that came on the scene around the turn of the century, like the 7mm Mauser, the 30-40 Krag, the 30-06 Springfield, and the 7.92 by 57mm Mauser. Not to be outdone by the other European powers, Norway and Sweden, which were united under a common monarch at the time, established a commission to select a new smokeless military cartridge for the two countries during the same time period. In 1894, the commission selected the cartridge now known as the 6.5 by 55 millimeter Swedish. While the two countries were united under the same monarch, Sweden and Norway maintained separate military forces which adopted different service rifles chambered in that new cartridge. The Swedish Mauser for Sweden and the Krag Jorgensen for Norway. Partly due to this reason, the cartridge is also known as the 6.5 by 55 millimeter Mauser, the 6.5 by 55 Swedish Mauser, and the 6.5 by 55 millimeter Krag, even though the cartridge is officially designated as the 6.5 by 55 Swedish by SAMI and the 6.5 by 55 SE by CIP. Now, similar to other cartridges uh, originally developed for military use, like the 7mm Mauser, and the 30 6 Springfield, and the 4570 Government, the 65 by 55 Swede quickly became very popular among civilian hunters and shooters in Scandinavia. Indeed, since it used bullets with a relatively high sectional density, bullets fired by the cartridge tend to penetrate really well, combined with the mild recoil and the very good accuracy of the cartridge and the rifles it was available in, the 6.5 Swede rapidly gained a reputation for effectiveness on big game like moose and reindeer. Over the years, the 6.5 by 55 Swede became very popular in Europe. However, while the cartridge did eventually develop a small following in North America, it never caught on in the United States to the same degree that it did in Europe. Now, the lack of appreciation for the 6.5 Swede among Americans was not due to any particular shortcoming on part of the cartridge. Indeed, 6.5 mm or .264 caliber cartridges in general had a tough time gaining traction in the United States for many decades. Now, that wasn't due to a lack of effort. American cartridges like the 264 Winchester Magnum and the 6.5 Remington Magnum also struggled to gain widespread acceptance for various reasons. Now that being said, American competitive shooters began to appreciate the aerodynamic benefits of 6.5mm bullets before the hunting and shooting communities at large. 
So for this reason, competitive shooters have used a number of different 6.5 millimeter Wildcat cartridges over the years. Now, in a move similar to what the company did with former Wildcats like the 22-250, the 25-06, and the 7mm 08, the Remington Arms Company standardized a Wildcat derived from the 308 Winchester known as the 6.508 as the 260 Remington in 1997. Developed from a 308 Winchester case neck down to shoot .264 caliber bullets, the 260 Remington essentially duplicates the performance of the 6.5x55 Swede in a smaller package. It has a mild recoil, a high degree of accuracy potential, and it can shoot high BC bullets that have a relatively flat trajectory with lots of resistance to wind deflection. To top it all off, unlike the 6.5 Swede, the 260 Remington fits in a short action rifle. Now, not surprisingly, the 260 Remington has seen a fair amount of success in competitive shooting circles. For instance, U.S. Army Sergeant Sherry Gallagher won the 2010 National High Power Rifle Championship using the 260 Remington. Now, that being said, for all its strengths, the 260 Remington really failed to make the crossover into the hunting community at large. Perhaps the 260 Remington was just a little ahead of its time. However, while prevailing attitudes towards 6.5mm cartridges in the U.S. have changed a great deal here since the 260 Remington was introduced in 1997, another cartridge has since come on the scene and stolen a lot of thunder from the Remington cartridge, the 6.5 Creedmoor. Unveiled in 2008, the 6.5 Creedmoor was the brainchild of Dave Emery and Dennis DeMille. They designed the cartridge in an effort to gain an edge in high-power rifle competition shooting, which had long been dominated by the 308 Winchester. Basically, they wanted a new cartridge that could fit in a short action magazine and was just as accurate as the 308, but with less recoil, less wind drift, and a flatter trajectory. By modifying a 30 Thompson center case to shoot .264 caliber bullets, they successfully built the cartridge with a relatively large case capacity, optimized for use with 4350 class propellants that could also accommodate long, heavy, high ballistic coefficient bullets without intruding into the powder column. Like the 260 Remington, the new 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge has less recoil, a flatter trajectory, and more resistance to wind drift than the old 308 Winchester. Now, the 6.5 Creedmoor was also designed after the 260 Remington in the midst of a boom in long range shooting when more shooters appreciated the benefits that it offered at extended range. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the 6.5 Creedmoor also received a more enthusiastic and coordinated marketing campaign from Hornady and Ruger than the 260 ever got from Remington. All of those things resulted in a better reception for the 6.5 Creedmoor in the shooting community than the old 260. So for many of those same reasons, the 6.5 Creedmoor has also gained much more widespread acceptance for big game hunting than the 260 Remington. So now that we've talked about the history of these cartridges, let's talk about their relative sizes. So first, all three use .264 caliber bullets. The 6.5x55 Swede has the longest case length and overall length of the three. However, with a maximum overall length of 2.825 inches and 2.8 inches respectively, the shorter 6.5 Creedmoor and 260 Remington will fit in a short action rifle, while the 3.15 inch long 6.5 Swede requires a long action rifle. Now, the 6.5 Creedmoor has a steeper 30 degree shoulder angle than the 25 and 20 degree shoulder angles on the 6.5 Swede and the 260 Remington cartridges. Additionally, the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Creedmoor both have a relatively common 0.473 inch rim diameter, while the 6.5 Swede has a more unusual 0.480 inch rim diameter. Due to its smaller dimensions, the 6.5 Creedmoor does have the smallest capacity of the three, while the 6.5 Swede has the largest case capacity. However, the 6.5 Swede has a lower maximum SAMI pressure than the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, even though there are some major differences in their external dimensions, the 260 Remington, the 6.5 Creedmoor, and the 6.5 Swede have very similar ballistics. This is due in large part to the fact that the most common factory hunting loads utilize the exact same bullets for each cartridge. The advantage in case capacity the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Swede have over the 6.5 Creedmoor is offset in part by the differences in maximum authorized pressure between the cartridges. 
Even so, for most factory loads using the same bullet, the 260 Remington will have a slightly higher velocity than the 6.5 Creedmoor, which will in turn have a slightly higher velocity than the 6.5 Sweep. And the same goes for maximum hand loads for each cartridge listed in reloading manuals. Now this is illustrated when you compare Swift high-grade factory ammunition loaded with the 140 grain Swift A-frame bullets and Barnes hand loads using the 120 grain TTSX. Now keep in mind these are maximum hand loads provided by Barnes on their website, so use them at your own risk. Now all six loads used a 200 yard zero in a 24 inch barrel, with the exception of the Swift 6.5 Swede factory load which used a 30 inch barrel. Interestingly, that 6.5 Swede load is the slowest of the bunch, even when used in a longer barreled rifle. Now note that this data is for 6.5 by 55 Swede factory ammo produced in the US. European ammunition for this cartridge can be as much as 100 to 200 feet per second faster for the same weight bullet, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Now just as you would expect, the 260 Remington has the flattest trajectory of the bunch and the 6.5 Swede has the most bullet drop. The same goes for the amount of kinetic energy retained at longer range. That shouldn't be surprising at all, especially considering that literally the only difference between these particular loads is their muzzle velocity. The bullets weigh the same and have the same BC. Now the same holds true when you compare how much a 10 mile an hour crosswind impacts those same six loads out to 500 yards. Once again, all three cartridges perform relatively well and pretty much like you'd expect. The 260 Remington has the least wind drift and the 6.5 Swede has the most. Now let's talk about recoil. Now I compared recoil produced by the Barnes loads just discussed for those cartridges when fired from a Tika T3X super light rifle. This specific model weighs 6.3 pounds when chambered in 260 Remington and 6.5 Swede and 6.5 pounds when chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Felt recoil will vary from shooter to shooter and rifle to rifle, but free recoil energy is still a useful way to compare cartridges. Now, not surprisingly, all three have a very manageable amount of recoil, with the 260 and the 6.5 Swede having a tiny bit more free recoil energy than the 6.5 Creedmoor. However, this difference is due primarily to the fact that the Tika T3 rifle chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor is a little bit heavier than the others. For all intents and purposes, there's no difference in recoil between the three. They are all very mild recoiling cartridges that the vast majority of shooters should be able to handle without any trouble. Now there is another area we need to discuss as it relates to ballistics, bullet weight. Now while all three cartridges use bullets of a similar weight, there are some minor differences to keep in mind. The 6.5 Swede most often utilizes bullet weights in the 100 to 160 grain range, with 120, 139, 140, and 156 grain bullets being the most common. Especially when you're dealing with factory hunting ammo, the 139 and 140 grain bullets are the most common for the 6.5 Sweet. Now on the other hand, the 260 Remington typically fires 85 to 143 grain bullets, and 120, 125, 129, 130, and 140 grain bullets are the most common. Now there is a good amount of factory hunting ammo loaded with 140 grain ammunition, but the 120, 125, and 130 grain bullets are much more common with the 260 Remington than with the 6.5 Sweet. Now finally, the 6.5 Creedmoor most often utilizes bullet weights in the 95 to 160 grain range, with 120, 129, 140, and 143 grain bullets being the most common. Sectional density is a measure of the ratio of the diameter of a projectile to its mass. All other things being equal, a heavier projectile of a given caliber will be longer and therefore have a higher sectional density and consequently penetrate deeper than projectiles with a lower mass and lower sectional density. Now since they all use the same diameter bullets of similar weights, there's not a big difference in bullet sectional density for most common factory loads used by the three cartridges. However, Norma does offer factory 6.5 by 55 Swede hunting ammo using 156 grain bullets and Hornady sells a 264 caliber 160 grain interlock round nose bullet that hand loaders could use for all three cartridges. So a 160 grain 264 caliber bullet has a sectional density of 0.328 and a 156 grain 0.264 caliber bullet has a sectional density of 0.320. 
This compares favorably to the 0.246 and 0.287 sectional densities of 120 grain and 140 grain bullets of the same caliber. Heck, those 160 grain and 156 grain bullets have a higher sectional density than the vaunted 175 grain bullet used by the 7mm Mauser and 7mm Rim Mag, which has a sectional density of 0.310. Since this episode is focused on the hunting applications of the three cartridges, I did not include any ballistic data comparing the cartridges past 500 yards. However, this is really where the Creedmoor starts to shine when compared to the others, especially the 260 Remington. Notice how much longer the 143 grain ELDX bullet for the 6.5 Creedmoor with a .625 BC bullet is than the 140 grain Corelock bullet for the 260 Remington, which has a .435 BC. Now, like I briefly mentioned earlier, due to its longer neck and shorter case length, the 6.5 Creedmoor is better suited than the 260 Remington for shooting very high BC match grade bullets without intruding into the powder column and while still fitting in a short action rifle magazine. Now, while there are a good number of 140 grain hunting ammo options for the 260 Remington, it is much easier to find factory ammo loaded with heavy, high BC bullets in the 6.5 Creedmoor. For instance, Hornady loads their match line of ammo with the 130 grain ELD match bullet in 260 Remington with a .506 BC, and the company does not currently manufacture their Precision Hunter line of ammo in that cartridge at all. On the contrary, Hornady offers their match and Precision Hunter lines of ammo with the 140 grain ELD match with a .646 BC, 143 grain ELDX with a 0.625 BC and 147 grain ELD match with a 0.697 BC bullets respectively for the Creedmoor. Now in cases where a company offers a factory load featuring very high BC bullets of the same weight for the two cartridges, like Berger does with their 140 grain hybrid target loads, the 6.5 Creedmoor is loaded to a slightly higher velocity than the 260 Remington. Though there are some exceptions, the same trend more or less holds true for hand loads with them as well. That slight advantage in velocity held by the 260 Remington over the 6.5 Creedmoor in many cases either narrows or flips in favor of the Creedmoor when we're talking about really high BC bullets. Like I said earlier, this is a very small distinction that makes very little difference for the vast majority of hunting situations. Granted, competition shooters fall into a completely different category from typical hunters, but this episode is focused on the performance of these cartridges for hunters. So now let's talk about barrel life. The three cartridges use the same diameter barrel, but different loads for each one use widely varying amounts of powder. Exactly how much depends on the cartridge as well as the specific load in question. Now, while the 6.5 Creedmoor and the 260 Remington use similar amounts of powder, with the 260 sometimes using a tiny bit more than the Creedmoor, many 6.5 Swede loads, especially in North America, use somewhat less powder. So simply put, a cartridge that burns more powder will have a shorter barrel life than a cartridge that burns less powder if they have the same barrel diameter and everything else is equal. Now that means that, in general, throat erosion will occur faster with the 260 Remington and 6.5 Creedmoor when compared to the 6.5 Swede. The difference between the 260 and the 6.5 Creedmoor is usually much smaller, but this is an area where the Creedmoor may have a very small edge over the 260 Remington. Now exactly how fast throat erosion occurs with each cartridge depends on a number of factors like the quality of the barrel, the exact ammo you're using, etc. And for serious target shooters, this may be a concern, but the good news for hunters is that typical uh, 260 Remington and 6.5 Creedmoor barrel life of several thousand rounds is more than enough to last for many, many years of hunting with no issues at all. So there's basically no practical difference between the Creedmoor and the 260 Remington barrel life as far as most hunters are concerned. Now, when using lower pressure loads, the 6.5 Swede will have a little bit longer barrel life than the other two, but that advantage disappears almost completely when we're talking about higher pressure loads. All right, so where do we stand with each one? With a flatter trajectory and less wind drift, the 260 Remington does have a tiny advantage over the 6.5 Swede and the 6.5 Creedmoor in external ballistics at typical hunting ranges when using typical factory hunting ammo. This makes the cartridge a tiny bit more forgiving of range or wind estimation errors than the others, but that is a very small advantage. 
Now, at least with typical American factory ammo anyway, the 6.5x55 Swede has slightly inferior ballistics than the other two. However, even though the 6.5 Swede does not have eye-popping ballistics when using heavy for caliber, high sectional density, 156 or 160 grain bullets, the cartridge tends to penetrate especially well and punch above its weight in a manner similar to what is observed with the 7x57 or 9.3x62 millimeter Mauser cartridges. It also has the longest barrel life of the bunch. Now, additionally, when higher pressure European ammo is used, the 6.5 Swede has virtually the same ballistics as the 6.5 Creedmoor and the 260 Remington. However, that does come at the expense of a slightly reduced barrel life. Now, finally, the 6.5 Creedmoor has very similar ballistics to the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Swede, while fitting more or less in between those other two cartridges in terms of trajectory, wind drift, kinetic energy, etc. However, it is a little bit better suited to shoot very high BC bullets at a higher velocity than the 260 Remington and the 6.5x55 Swede. Now, while that does give the 6.5 Creedmoor a slight advantage in terms of trajectory and resistance to wind drift, it does not make an appreciable differences at ranges inside 700-800 yards or thereabouts. Now, there's virtually no difference in recoil between the three, and they're all known as very easy-to-shoot cartridges that most hunters and shooters should be able to handle with ease. Now, it might seem like I'm splitting hairs here when talking about these cartridges and the strengths and weaknesses of them. That is absolutely true. In fact, of all the episodes I've done comparing different cartridges, I've had to do the most nitpicking and hair-splitting in this one because they're just so darn similar to each other. Now, while each offer different advantages, all three are relatively flat shooting, have mild recoil, and they hit hard enough for use on a variety of game out to several hundred yards. So for the vast majority of hunters, there's basically no difference in their performance at typical hunting ranges. Now, there are a couple of other factors we need to discuss going beyond just their ballistics on paper uh, that will really start to differentiate between which one you need to be using. So first, we'll discuss ammo selection. The 6.5 Creedmoor is by far the most popular of the three. As of 2021, the 6.5 Creedmoor is likely the number three most popular centerfire rifle cartridge in the USA in terms of raw ammo sales behind only the 223 Remington and the 308 Winchester. So it is really popular. For that reason, the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Swede cannot hold a candle to the popularity of the Creedmoor and the corresponding selection of factory 6.5 Creedmoor ammo choices that are available for it. Now, that being said, the 260 and the 6.5 Swede are not exactly rare in North America either. Now, additionally, the script flips completely in Europe, and the 6.5 Swede is one of the most popular cartridges used by hunters over there, though the 6.5 Creedmoor is also gaining a popularity in Europe as well. Now, many of the really big ammo manufacturers like Federal, Hornady, Norma, Nosler, Remington, and Swift do produce a lot of good quality hunting ammo for all three cartridges. Additionally, Barnes and Berger make ammo for the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Creedmoor, while Lapua, Seller and Balat, and Privy Partisan are all good sources of 6.5 Swede ammo. Now, prices and availability vary from region to region, but in the U.S., the 6.5 Creedmoor is by far the easiest to find and is usually a little bit less expensive than the others during normal times. Now, once again, the situation is different in Europe, and the 6.5 Swede is the most common and the least expensive there, usually. Now, all three are relatively popular among reloaders, and hand-loading components are widely available. And not only do all three cartridges use the same .264 caliber bullets, but they also use the same size bullets as other cartridges like the 6.5 Grendel, 6.5x284 Norma, the 264 Winchester Magnum, 6.5 PRC, 26 Nosler, etc. Now, since more and more shooters are starting to appreciate the advantages offered by the 6.5 millimeter bore size, there is a very large and growing selection of quality 6.5 millimeter bullets to choose from, like the Barnes LRX and TTSX, Berger VLD, Hornady ELD Match and ELDX, Interlock, SST, the Nosler Acubon, Nosler Ballistic Tip and E-Tip Partition, and the Swift A-Framed and Sirocco. Now, the rifle situation is very Uh, similar to the ammunition situation with these cartridges. The 6.5 Creedmoor is most common in North America, but the 6.5 Swede is most common in Europe. Now, to an even greater degree than most other gun manufacturers, Ruger has really gotten behind the 6.5 Creedmoor and offers their American FTW Hunter Hawkeye Long Range Target, Number 1, and Precision Rifles in 6.5 Creedmoor. 
Now, Ruger does not currently manufacture any rifles in 260 Remington or 65 Swede, but they have in the past. Now, the Browning X-Bolt, Mossberg Patriot, Nosler M48, Weatherby Vanguard, and Winchester Model 70 are also good examples of rifles available in 65 Creedmoor. Now, not surprisingly, Remington currently manufactures rifles chambered in 260 Remington, their Model 7 and 700 lines. They also produce the Model 7, 700, and 783 in 6.5 Creedmoor. Savage also produces their Model 110 rifles in both 260 Remington and 6.5 Creedmoor. On the other hand, your European manufacturers like CZ, Mauser, Sacco, and Sauer make several different modern rifles in 6.5 suite. Tika is the only company I'm aware of at this time that produces rifles in all three. Now the 260, the 65 Creedmoor, and the 65 Suite are all most common in bolt action rifles. However, the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Creedmoor are also available in some semi-automatic sporting rifles like the various models of the AR-10 platform as well. So with all that being said, which one is right for you? Well, do you primarily hunt medium-sized game like hogs, black bear, or deer at ranges within 200 yards? All three are wonderfully suited for hunting thick-skinned, medium-sized animals like pronghorn, feral hogs, mule deer, black-tailed deer, white-tailed deer, roe deer, and fallow deer. There isn't much difference between them ballistically inside of 200 yards. Go with the 6.5 Creedmoor or the 6.5 Swede if you live in Europe if you want the cheapest or easiest to find factory ammo. Now, are you looking for a great cartridge for hunting game like pronghorn or deer in open country where you might need to take a shot at several hundred yards? They all work very well in this role as well, and the differences between them is still very small. Uh, but with typical factory hunting loads, the 260 Remington might have a slight advantage over the others in this regard with the flatter trajectory and the most resistance to wind drift. But then again, the 6.5 Creedmoor does have that little bit of an advantage with the higher BC bullets. Like I keep saying, I'm splitting hairs here. All three will work, especially the 260 and the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, are you sensitive to recoil? All are very mild recoiling cartridges, and there isn't a lot of difference between them in this area. Now, do you want a cartridge that's better suited for target shooting out uh, 1,200 yards or so? The 260 Remington is a very good choice for this, as is the 65 uh, Swede, but the 65 Creedmoor does have a definite edge for longer range shooting since it is a little bit better suited to using those very high BC bullets. Now, are you looking for a great cartridge for sheep, mountain goat, or tar hunting where you need a heavier hitting cartridge with manageable recoil uh, in a light rifle that's still lightweight and easy to carry? The 260 Remington and the 6.5 Creedmoor both fit the bill here, and to a lesser extent, the 6.5 Swede. None is a classic sheep hunting cartridge, but they're powerful enough to get the job done, and they have a very mild recoil in a lightweight rifle that's easy to haul up the mountain. Now, maybe do you want something that's well-suited to hunt elk, moose, red stag, kudu, or something like that bigger game with? Now, while they are excellent choices for deer size game, these three cartridges are also suitable for the bigger creatures under the right circumstances. Now, many people look down their noses at these cartridges for elk and moose hunting, but the fact of the matter is that due to the exceptionally long run the 6.5 Swede had in the hands of Scandinavian hunters, very few other cartridges have taken more moose than the 6.5 Swede since the 1890s. All three have very similar ballistics at short range, and they're all perfectly capable of ethically taking moose and elk sized game to include most species of plains game you might encounter in Africa under the right conditions. Now, that being said, the 260, the 6.5 Creedmoor, and the 6.5 Swede are in a totally different league from heavy hitters like the 7mm Magnum and the 300 Win Mag when it comes to hunting really big game, and they would not be my first choice for this task. However, if you use heavier and good quality bullets, maybe like that uh, 156 grain or the 160 grain bullets I mentioned earlier, or maybe something like 140 grain Nosler Partition, and you only take shots within 200 yards, and preferably closer. And if you're very careful with your shot placement and the angles that you shoot at and, and try and uh, maybe focus on broadside shots on bigger game, they will all work just fine. But that's a lot of caveats, though. Now, of the three, I would personally lean towards the 6.5 Swede with its better selection of high-quality heavy bullets and easier-to-find factory ammo, though. But once again, they'll all work. Now, like I've said many times, the 260 Remington, the 6.5 Creedmoor, and the 6.5 by 55 Swede are all excellent rifle cartridges, and the differences between them are very small, which makes it virtually impossible to choose the quote-unquote best one from the group. 
On the contrary, even though they each have their own strengths and weaknesses, they are all very capable performers that are suitable for a wide range of hunting tasks. The differences between them are extremely small, and there is a large amount of overlap between them. No animal will know the difference if your shot is placed in the right spot. Get a good hunting rifle chambered in the cartridge that you think fits your needs the best. Learn to shoot it well, use quality bullets, and you'll be all set for most hunting situations. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click that red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos on hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. Now, for more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they're best suited for, click on the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers. Now I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Which one do you prefer? The 6.5 Creedmoor? The 260 Remington or the 6.5 Swede. What game have you successfully taken with them and what ammo did you use to do that? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.